Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is uh, 5090 O level biology. This is the second video of the November 18 question paper 1 2. We did the first 15 questions. Now we are going to start with question 16 and let's see how many of you can do in this video. With question 16 How many molecules of carbon dioxide will be produced from the breakdown of two molecules of glucose in aerobic respiration? Now, of course, you have to know the equation for respiration, and that is what? That is. Uh, CO2, you see, break down two molecules, aerobic respiration, sorry, that's glucose, so C6H12O6 plus 6O2, and that you get 6CO2 plus 6H2O, that's of course balances it out. So 6 CO2 from one molecule, it says the breakdown of two molecules of glucose. So 6 into 2 will be 12 and that will be the answer to that. Question 17. Question 17 is how does anaerobic respiration in the muscle cell cause reduction in blood pH? Something, some sort of an acid has to be produced and lactic acid diffuses into the blood and this of course lowers the pH. More the acid, uh, more the pH will become lesser and lesser. Then question to 18, which row shows the events that occur to cause air flow to the lungs? Now air flow to the lungs is what happens is how does the volume change? So the shape of the diaphragm becomes flattened. Shape of the diaphragm becomes flattened as you can see here. So this is going to increase the top to bottom. Uh, this is the chest cavity. So this is the diaphragm here. So when the diaphragm flattens and the movement of the ribcage will be upwards and outwards. So this way also the volume is increased. So as the volume increases, air moves in from high pressure to low pressure because when the volume increases, the pressure decreases. The pressure decreases inside. So the pressure decreases inside the chest cavity and then air will move in. So air will move in from outside to the inside. And so rib cage will move up and outwards. Then coming to question number 19. Question 19. Why is it important that the lungs remove carbon dioxide from the body? Why? Because uh, we know excretion is the removal of toxic metabolic waste. So carbon dioxide is a metabolic waste and that needs to be removed from the body. So carbon dioxide can't accumulate in the body and is poisonous so we what is excretion excretion is the removal of toxic metabolic waste and carbon dioxide is one of the excretory products if you look at the syllabus that is one of the things that is being examined as i always tell you when we make mcqs if i'm the examiner and i'm making the mcqs i have to specify which part of the syllabus am i examining so this has to be clarified so i would expect all of you to go through the syllabus and they revise each and every point of the syllabus because that is what they are going to examine. If you know the syllabus, you know what MCQs they are asking you. Then coming on to question number 20. So if you look at question number 20, which structures are all involved in controlling human body temperature? You enter this room, this room is very hot. You somehow you are doing ice skating and fall into ice cold water. Shivering. So blood vessels near the skin surface, the hypothalamus and the skeletal muscles. Which structures are all involved? Which structures are all involved in controlling human body temperature? So blood vessels near the skin surface, the hypothalamus and the skeletal muscles. So when you start shivering, that is when the skeletal muscles are going to come into operation. So it says all involved in controlling the human body temperature. So this is what we had to answer. Well, this was a difficult question because you had to understand is that, you know, in this case, of course, this is incorrect. Kidneys, of course, never work. They never work in controlling human body temperature. They control the water content, yes. We would have to talk about that in another question. 21. The diagram shows the eye viewed from the front and its lens in cross section. Which diagram shows the appearance of the pupil and the shape of the lens when looking up at the sky at night? Now looking up at the sky at night, you've got to understand it's all very dark. So you have to remember that it had to be two. 
why it had to be two because of course we have to understand why would it be two because you're looking in the dark so the pupil must be wider so now what are the options for two the options for two were either c or d now you know why it would be four because the simple mnemonic is nmc near more convex and dlc distant less convex or you can say on something nadia more crazy and danya less crazy so uh, you have to remember these near is more convex and when you're looking at something at the sky would be distant so distance would be less convex so that would be four of course this is how you remember this this is of course factual matter that you need to remember then question 22 what is the major function of medulla Medulla and the brain control the contractions of the diaphragm. Why? Because it controls heart rate, breathing rate. So these are all the ones which are going to be controlled by the medulla. So that would be controlling the contractions of the diaphragm because this is when the volume of the chest cavity would be changed by the uh, controlling, by the contractions or relaxations of the diaphragm. Then question 23. Which statement about insulin is correct? It converts glycogen to glucose. No, it converts glucose to glycogen. It's the opposite of that. It is broken down by the liver. Yes, that is the correct answer. Why is C wrong? Because insulin is produced not by the liver, but is produced by the pancreas. It releases, increases, it re, its release increases blood glucose level. No, it's the opposite. Insulin is produced when you eat a piece of chocolate cake because there's too much sugar in the blood. And this glucose has to be removed and converted to glycogen. So, and then of course, this uh, insulin has to be removed and broken down by the liver. That is again a syllabus point of yours which is being examined. Then coming to question 24, the diagram shows the elbow joint in two different positions. Uh, muscle Y and muscle X. Now muscle Y is the biceps muscle as we know it is the front of the arm. So this would be the biceps. And muscle X would be the triceps, which is to straighten the arm. Now you can see how they have changed it. This is the arrow which is in this direction. So you sort of bent your arm. Now you're straightening your arm a little bit. And it says what happens to the muscle to change the position of the elbow joint as shown above. So the muscle Y, which is the biceps, has to relax. And the muscle X, which is the triceps, will have to contract so when you have bent your arm at the elbow and you're going to straighten it from a bent state to a straightening so that was uh, that's called flexion and extension so now you're extending it so the muscle x which is the triceps will have to contract and this the other will have to relax so that was the answer to that then coming on to question number 25. Now if you look at question 25, the graph shows the effect of four different antibiotics on the growth of a population of bacteria, antibiotic W, X, Y, and Z, and the percentage reduction in growth. Now this is important that you look at the Y axis. It's the percentage reduction in growth, and this is the time in hours. Now which of these statements is correct? Antibiotic W is more effective than X. W is more effective than X. Okay, see it carefully. Against this bacteria after 10 hours. Antibiotic W is more effective than X. Now look at see where is X. Let's, let's mark X. This is X. And this is W. Now at W, where is the percentage reduction of growth, which is going, X is percentage reduction is above that than of W. So we have to find out, is that correct or not? Then it says antibiotic X. Second point, antibiotic X is more effective than antibiotic Y against these bacteria. So we are now comparing X with Y. But the percentage growth of X has percentage reduction, so 75% reduction in growth, while in Y, 
there is about between 25 and 50 that is a reduction in growth and antibiotic z is the most effective of these four antibiotics against these bacteria so you know that what would be correct would only be two and this is why that is the answer so read this question carefully understand all this draw these point, uh, marks on the graph and then see which one is correct which one is the correct answer so one of those difficult questions then coming on to question number 26 yeast is used in the production of which materials yeast is used in the production of which materials now it's alcohol bread cheese and yogurt so we had three four things alcohol bread cheese so we know yeast now this is of course very factual so you know alcohol we need uh, yeast in bread we need yeast in cheese and yogurt we use bacteria so a was correct then coming on to question number 27 some stages in the production of yogurt are listed liquid cooled rapidly liquid kept at 40 to 45 for three hours culture of bacteria added to liquid liquid pasteurized now you know yogurt we use milk milk you add the bacteria first of course you boil the milk to kill any pathogenic bacteria then you add the culture uh, so first you cool it then you add the culture and then you keep it for a couple of hours so the answer to that was four three two one why four first the milk is pasteurized then Y3, culture of bacteria added. Then liquid kept at 45 for 3 hours. So that set, And then we cool it rapidly. So that we don't want it to become very sour. Because lactic acid is produced. The lactose is converted to lactic acid. And that is why if you keep yogurt, normal yogurt, which is dahi in the fridge. And you keep it for 2-3 days. After 2-3 days it becomes sour. Because you take it out, eat a little bit, keep it back again. So the bacteria keep on multiplying and more and more of the acid is produced. And this acid makes it all very, very sour. So you, that's why we cool it rapidly as soon as we've set the uh, yogurt. Then coming to question number 28. Which organisms always, always obtain their energy from dead organic matter? So that is always decomposers can't be anything else. So that is a very straightforward answer. Then coming on to question 29. Now in 29 we have a pyramid of numbers. The diagram shows part of a food web. Which pyramid of numbers is based on this food web? Now what is the point which is going to give you a clue to which one is the pyramid of numbers? Now in numbers you know what are we talking about? We are talking about uh, not the mass, it's not a pyramid of biomass, it's a pyramid of numbers. Now, of course, we have to realize it. Why was it A? Now, we have to realize it that there would be a certain number of trees, say about 5, 10 trees, then we would have very large number of snails on that, maybe 500 snails on that, and then you would have another, say about 50 thrush on it, and then we would have, say, about 5 eagles living on it. So this is how we were going to figure out the pyramid of numbers on this. We would not have the last would be a smaller numbers of beagles, foxes and badgers. And B has a very large number on the top. And uh, C and D of course with trees, the number of trees would be lesser. There can't be so many trees in it. So that is how we were going to figure out the pyramid of numbers. Then coming on to question number 30. Which labeled arrow in the nitrogen cycle represents the nitrogen fixation? Nitrogen fixation would be nitrogen in the air and then finally being converted to nitrogen in plants. So it had to be A, couldn't be anything else. Nitrogen fixation is basically, um, you know, examples of lightning and other which will of course increase the nitrate contents of the soil. But here it says nitrogen in plants. So this is the, of course the nitrogen fixing bacteria which are present in leguminous plants. And this would be the question which is testing how well you know the nitrogen cycle. Then coming on to question number 32 or 30, sorry, 31. Which type of organism is the vector of the parasite that causes malaria? We know it's a female Anopheles mosquito and organism is the vector. The parasite, of course, is plasmodium and that is a protozoa. It's not a bacteria. It's not a virus. It's not a fungus. It's a, it's a protozoa. So plasmodium, please remember that. And then, of course, it said vector. Vector is the female Anopheles mosquito. 
so that of course is an insect it is not anything else why are insecticides sometimes regarded as pollutants why because they can kill uh, the why are insects basically what they are asking you why are insecticides regarded as pollutants because they will of course pollute insecticides kill insects so what we have to understand is the answer to that is c why is because they can kill a wide range of insects they don't they don't kill the specifically the ones which are harmful to us but they will kill any other insect also which may not be harmful to the plant or to us as well when we are spraying insecticides on crops 33 what is an advantage of sexual reproduction over asexual reproduction so it produces offspring with different characteristics you see uh, asexual reproduction produces clones all are genetically the same but in sexual we have the offsprings will have different characteristics then coming on to 34 what are the two male parts of the plant and you all know that as factual anther and filament then number 35 which row shows a disease and the pathogen that causes it so if four diseases aids malaria and syphilis you know aids is caused caused by a virus so the first and the second are wrong malaria is not caused by an insect it's caused by plasmodium but the insect is the vector and syphilis is the one which is caused by a bacterium so that was the correct answer to that coming on to the next question which is 36 now 36 is a little confusing 36 is say the table gives the average dietary requirements of iron in milligram per day for females and males of various ages now again this is a syllabus point which they are checking which you need to know why does a 20 year old female require the highest average dietary requirements of iron it's in the syllabus actually to make up for the menstrual blood loss and when i teach you this i usually tell you this is that they're going to specifically ask you this question on why women would need girls would need more iron early in age because when they start menstruating every month they lose blood and that could result in deficiency so they need to take more iron because iron is needed to make the hemoglobin molecule inside the red blood cell then coming to question number 37 what is the primary function of dna it controls the absorption of nutrients well that's wrong it controls the production of protein that's again a syllabus point it controls the rate of mutation it controls the rate of reproduction this is all very good beautiful story so that's a bs beautiful story then coming on to question number 38 in the abo blood group system which genotype is homozygous dominant you know we have three alleles ia ib and io now this would be very easy to figure out because you see it has to be either ia ia which is says homozygous dominant ia ia is homozygous dominant ib io b is homozygous dominant but this is homozygous recessive so this would be wrong this is of course heterozygous and this is again also heterozygous so homozygous dominant would only be c which is ib ib Then coming on to question number thirty-nine, the diagram shows a family in which some members suffer from a disease caused by a recessive allele. Now there is a very interesting way how you do this question, and the way that you do this question is that you look at male without the disease, then female without the disease, then male with the disease, and the female with the disease caused by a recessive allele. So if it is caused by a recessive allele, the people with the disease. will all be this small a small a you can give any letters to it but i'm just giving you this letter the man without the disease would be big a big a or could be big a small a so now if you look at the people with the disease these are all small a small a so you write that you write that on the on the pedigree chart now it is very easy to answer which uh, which are the two members of the family who must be heterozygous now that was very easy to figure out why would be heterozygous would be only be 5 and 7 but how do you know it's 5 and 7 because you see this is not affected so this person has to be either aa and this one has to be 
this one and two are the parents one is the father and two is the mother and they have two children four and five and both of them are unaffected so both of them are probably this right so it says which must be heterozygous but of course we have to find out is what what we have to find out is that which ones are must be heterozygous now explaining this question 39 you as i've always told you is first of all you write out the recessive alleles and the answer to this was five and seven but why five and seven is what you have to answer they have to be because you see the male with the disease i mean if it's on the x and the y chromosome then there's only one allele which is present so the fact that they specified it so we're only going to be able to answer it that who must be heterozygous would only be the female ones and that would be five and seven now this is the type of very difficult question which is going to make or break your grade and this is what you need to understand and i will explain this in a future few more other papers as well is how this was the answer to it and why this was the answer to it i try to explain it at the end of this uh, paper as well and then coming to the last question which was question 40 which statement is correct evolution is natural selection evolution results in natural selection more or less the other way around natural selection and evolution are independent of each other natural selection results in evolution now only if you know the actual story of natural selection and evolution you can do this question there is nothing you had to really know it is you know natural selection first first there's variation then there is change in the environment and then there is survival of the fittest and these people who survive pass on the advantageous alleles survival of the fittest and then of course evolution takes place so natural selection first variation then environmental change then survival of the fittest and then there's evolution so natural selection results in evolution so in this video we finished question 16 to question 40 and they've all been completed and i hope this is helpful to you and please go through question 39 which was difficult and that will be the make and break sort of a question which comes in your uh, coming exam and thank you very much